250 Model 2. In 1965, the United States Air Force began implementing a large-scale program to automate air base supply systems supporting 110 U.S. Air Force bases. This was the first Air Force-wide implementation of a centrally designed computer-based logistics support system. The Air Force approved the initial concept of an automated standard supply system in 1962 and selected the UNIVAC 1050 Model 2 as their computer of choice in November 1963. Sperry Rand employed over 100,000 people and operated 92 manufacturing facilities in the U.S. and abroad. Sperry's government marketing headquarters in Washington, D.C. included a fully equipped customer training center designed to supplement the Air Force's own computer training programs. Sperry's high-tech laboratories included the Sperry Rand Research Center in Sudbury, Massachusetts. The Whitpain Engineering Center in Philadelphia, and the St. Paul Research Laboratory in Minnesota. One of the 1050's many features, in addition to its real time computational ability, was its high compatibility with other large systems and its use of high speed peripheral devices. In the 1960s, the U.S. Air Force was the largest government user of electronic data processing equipment. To handle this major contract, to computerize the standard base supply system, Sperry's corporate organization included a division devoted exclusively to the massive UNIVAC 1050 installation program. The first 1050 system was installed at Bowling Air Force Base in Washington, D.C followed by an installation at Andrews Air Force Base in Maryland. The other bases were scheduled for installation at the rate of 10 base installations per month. These installations started in September 1965. All 110 bases were converted to the new system by August 1966. This system was designed to provide standardized programs and procedures for base supply operations throughout the Air Force. This included logistics, personnel, accounting, and finance. Prior to this implementation, air bases had various types of computers and punch card equipment, but there was no standardized automated system in place. The UNIVAC 1050 was a variable word length machine. It was introduced in 1963. The 1050 Model 2 was the military version of the commercial UNIVAC 1050 model. Here we see a UNIVAC 1050 used at the U.S. Air Force Base in Da Nang in 1966. The UNIVAC 1050 system was chosen for its effective use in remote sites as an integral part of a centralized electronic data processing system. Most programming for the UNIVAC 1050 was written in the PAL assembly language. The Air Force's UNIVAC 1050 Model 2 real-time system had some extra peripherals. The most significant of these was the FastRAN drum storage unit. Other peripherals were the card reader, card punch, high-speed printer and communication subsystems linked to remote sites. The UNIVAC 1050 supported up to 32K of memory using 6-bit characters. It was a solid-state general-purpose machine. The high-speed printer could produce 700 to 922 lines per minute. It used continuous form-feed paper, typical of that time period. The high-speed card reader could process 1,000 cards per minute. It utilized 80-column or 90-column cards. 
the card hopper had a capacity of holding 3,000 cards at one time. Teleprinter Used with the Univac system for communication and control. The teletype could accommodate an internal modem with an optional acoustic coupler or a direct computer control link produced by the Teletype Corporation, a component of the American Telephone and Telegraph Company's Western Electric Manufacturing Division. The U.S. Air Force hired the RAND Corporation to produce a study of the implementation and effectiveness of this large automation project. They produced a 49-page report in 1968, the full text of which is available online. 